SRZ Shepi N are the Italian sounds we're gonna learn today as we are going through the part two of the hardest sounds of the Italian language. Now you saw the previous video, you saw how the part one went. We've got a lot today too. So without any further ado, let's start our session. Ciao a tutti e benvenuti al Facile Come Italiano. Hello everybody, welcome to Easy as Italian. I'm Reza, for sure you know me after all this time. And now at the first second, I really want to recommend you to go watch the previous session. These things that we want to learn in this session, the sounds we're going to learn in this session are dependent and related to the sounds we learned in part one, the previous video. So please, for God's sake, I don't know where does it appear here or here, just go and watch it for just... Uh, if you can't learn that, you cannot enjoy this session at most. That's the thing I know. Anyway, let's start. We've got not much time to pass. As you remember, in the first part, in part one of the hardest sounds of the Italian language, we talked about these two letters, chi and g. We said they have two sounds, ch, k, j, g, soft and hard, in order. Now, we said that what makes them soft? Some kind of vowels we call softeners that we said they take a spoon, they rub it flat on chi and g, they make them soft. The soft would be ch, the soft would be j. Na. We said that any other letter would make them sound hard. They are horny. Put that aside. We want to add another letter. We want to make a combination. Well, we have it in English too, don't panic. We have SH, we have T-I-O-N, right? Now, the thing we want to add is S, and we want to add it to CHI. What would be the sound? Well, S sounds S, and CHI would sound CH or K, depending on what comes after that. And actually, it is pretty important here that the CHI is soft or hard in this combination, because if we have something like the softeners that are only two for god's sake two e or e simple rules if we have those in front of the combination the chi would sound soft ch and surely then the combination would also sound soft that would be a soft sound of sh sh then if we have anything other than the softeners the chi would sound hard k and surely again the combination would sound hard a hard sound of ske where would you see that well for example we have the softeners she she we can have no other sound of she in italian language she or she is the only thing for example we have shoko 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 means crazy okay or we have asciugamani, asciugamani, that is the head of a towel. Now, where can we see the hard sound? That sounds a little stupid. I mean, ske, ske. Why would you have a combination ske? You can just have it in the words. Why would you combine the letters? Well, we can have scapare scappare to run away or we can write the names of other people like Stravinsky Stravinsky Ski why wouldn't we need that combination we have Russians surely we need that now all the rules you remember we used for chi or G are applied here we said that when we want to have a hard sound with the softeners we would add akka, like that you saw now, ski. Or we said that when we want to have a sound with other vowels, but we want it soft, we put a softener between the combination and the vowel. So if we want the sha sound, we write it shia and we read it sha, sha, sha. The e would be have a very short sound. Now, leaving that and putting chi aside, we go and talk about S. S, well, 
It's just essay. Nothing special. You think so? Well, the thing is Italians don't like essay much. So it got actually a little depressed through time. It's lonely. It feels sad. So it cannot express its sound so well. And that's why you see Italians don't pronounce se so vigorously, so strongly. Well, unlike Spanish. Then actually Italians mock Spanish people for making the S sound so strong. So if you want not to be mocked in Italy, my recommendation is learning the S sound pretty well. Well, S, as I said, is sad and lonely and depressed. It cannot express the sound so well. So what shall we do? Well, imagine yourself saying S, S, continue that. Now, imagine yourself saying Z, continue that. Now, you should find somewhere in the middle, between S and Z, the lonely sound of S sliding towards Z, losing its identity. We have Z, 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 Z. okay? It's not completely S, it's not completely Z. Somewhere in the middle. Now, where can we see that? Pericoloso. Pericoloso. As you can see and hear, this is not completely S and not completely Z. It's pericoloso. Pericoloso. Okay? Now, this S can be encouraged to sound stronger. How? Well, if you are not like Italians, you can just care about it. Put it at the beginning of the words. That way, it would get encouraged a little. Like in that word that I told you some seconds ago. Scapare. Scapare. The sound of S is more obvious now. It can be heard now. Or we can have sete, sete, right? Or sale, sale. The S can be heard more, surely. Now, we have also another way of encouraging S. How? We can put a friend for it. If we put another S beside S, Surely, when it's not alone, it would feel less lonely, it would feel more encouraged, it would not feel as depressed and as sad as all the time it's feeling. So, we can have passare, passare. So, we have three sounds of S. Lonely, depressed and sad. It goes in the middle of the words. Like, pericoloso, pericoloso. It's not totally S, it's not totally Zeta, something that has lost its identity. Now, we can encourage it, making the S a little stronger, putting it in at the beginning of the words, like Sete, Scapare, Sale. Okay? Now, we can have even a stronger sound by putting a friend for S, like in Passare. Passare. The next topic is R. I'm sure you've heard that you need to roll your R in Italian language. But the thing I'm going to talk about is not that. It's related to those three sounds of S. We saw that it can have some changes depending on where you put S or if you put a friend for it or not. Now, R has the same reactions. R is not lonely, it's not depressed, it's just like a sissy. It really is a sissy. It needs your attention. Without that, it cannot go and pass by. For example, ah, let's say we have something like pigra, pigra. It's alone in the middle, 
nothing to do with that no one would even care about it so the sound of R wouldn't be that strong pigro pigra lazy pigro pigra it's just a hit of your tongue behind your front upper teeth or let's say we put it at the beginning care about it a little more put some attention for them we can have ragazza ragazzo surely it got stronger right ragazzo now we can put a friend for that and i've got a very special word for you here arrivederci arrivederci as you see this word has a double r a doppio r and a one solo r and you can clearly see the difference between the sounds arrivederci the second r is not that strong you don't put much heat and focus behind that just one finished the first one though it has two it gets stronger it's arrivederci arrivederci okay so you cannot miss that if it is one in the middle again we have pigro we have ragazzo and we have arrivederci now r was almost like s nothing special just remember if you can roll your r even it is okay seriously i have talked to many italians in my life and they are really okay with not rolling the r and some of them even cannot do that so don't worry about it if you can do it do it as i told you right now because this is the proper and official way of doing that this is the standards now if you cannot don't worry just try to put more focus when it's double and when it's at the beginning of the words that's it now i told you we're gonna also talk about zeta in the part one i told you that this has a special sound well not much actually if you're a german person you can easily figure that out z z okay like zaino zaino or uh, i don't know let's say conversazione conversazione okay and that's it it would be really easy for germans or deutsch people to understand that it's just z nothing special uh, the thing is, the next sound may seem a little frustrating. I'm warning you right now not to get angry. It's just a simple way of use it, and it's taken from Latin. Actually, uh, in English, sometimes you don't pronounce P, and you have it silent. What? P is silent in English? No. It is. Psychology pneumatic let's say the longest word in english what was it pneumono ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis it still has the silent p in italian the thing is we don't have silent we read and say everything we see on the paper i mean whatever you see inside that word you have to pronounce it okay and whatever you hear, you can write down, and that would be the exact pronunciation. So that is what we call phonetics, right? Now, we can have things like psychology, and we have to pronounce them. Like psicologia. I don't know if it seems hard or easy. It was easy to me, and I haven't seen anyone struggling with them. But still... Cool. Psicologia. Or you can have pneumatico. Pneumatico. It's like the pn, pn sound in French. We have it too. Psicologia. Pneumatico. Though. Just two easy examples of these sounds with P that are made. And fortunately, we don't have much of them. But still, you need to be careful not to give yourself up. 
PSPNSH, Zeta, RS, all the words and the sounds, not words, sounds we talked about today. I hope you've enjoyed this session. Just put a like, not downward like, and also subscribe to the channel for more sessions of this beautiful language. I'm a little tired of the beginner sessions. I may put an advanced one next and then go again for the beginners. I'll see what happens, but make sure I'm there for you.